constantly with us above every miracle of prophets old which came and went. Damet Ledena. What he means by constantly with us is that when we look at the prophets before us, before the Prophet Sallallahu you find that whatever miracles that Jesus did, Ja'at wan Qadat. They manifested Dhaharat wan Qadat and then they ceased, finished. Where are the miracles of Jesus now? <coughs> Where are the miracles of Moses now? The splitting of the Red Sea. You go to the Red Sea, the Red Sea is not split. Where are the miracles of of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Where's the fire of Nimrod in our day and age? And where are the miracles of the prophets themselves? All of the miracles of the prophets manifested and they've ceased in history. Yet the miracle of the Rasul, his supreme miracle, the Quran, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, remains with us to this very day. The Quran of itself. Remember Suyuti rahimahullah ta'ala said in the Quran, there are over 60,000 miracles. <coughs> In the Quran, I mean, what is the Quran? 60,000 miracles. The Quran's a miracle in and of itself, and there are over 60,000 miracles inside of the Quran. Imam Abdul Rahman Sayyuti, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, says, He mentioned, Radiallahu Ta'ala, anu, wa arda, that inside of the Quran, there are 24,800 different sciences, uloom. 24,800 different sciences. They mentioned inside of the Quran that every single verse in the Quran has 60,000 different interpretations. Fahm, mafa'im, understandings of the Quran in and of itself. Yeah, you read a tafsir, like one of the great tafsirs, which tried to give us the different um, understandings of a verse, like Ibn Juzay al-Kalbi, in his Tashil fi ulum tanzil in his facilitation, the sciences of revelation. Yeah, he'll give you a verse, and you will say, this verse has five meanings. Verse has 10 meanings. Verse has 15 meanings. And you one, 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 you mention it one by one, you tell you this is the strongest meaning of the verse. But he's given you three, five, seven meanings. And he's 60,000 meanings. The Quran has tenzil with tenezzul. As the Prophet says, what's tenzil and tenezzul? Yeah, it has initial descent, the Quran. In the time of the Rasul, the Quran, the Quran descends in terms of word, in terms of meaning. The time of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then tenezzul, staggered descent. What's tenezzul, staggered descent? To this day, new meanings are still being revealed into the Quran. To this day, new meanings. That's the words of the Rasul himself, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahi wa sallam. The Quran is an ocean, la sahila la. It's an ocean that has no shore. Uh, it's a sea that has no bottom. That's the nature of the Quran in and of itself. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, it has a zahir. It has an outward manifestation. Well, batin, it has an inward reality. Well, mutalah, and a point of ascension unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Quran, fascinating. Eh? The Quran in and of itself. As Allah ta'ala said, tibyanan li kulli shay. A clarification for everything. Allah ta'ala says, Abdullah ibn Abbas, when Allah ta'ala said, tibyanan li kulli shay, mafaratana fil kitabi min shay. That we've not abandoned anything inside of the book. Abdullah ibn Abbas said, if I lost the halter of my camel, you know, the, 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 the halter of his camel, if I lost it, I could find it inside of the Quran. I could just open up the Quran and find it right there inside of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A raft in the cave. One of our teachers of Quran, mashallah ta'ala, may Allah ta'ala preserve him. He mentioned about his teacher of the Quran. That one of his teachers of the Quran is called him Ar-Rahil. He says that once when Iraq then and before, as it was of a recent, occupied by the British. And he says once he was getting up on, on a train inside of Iraq, his teacher was getting up on a train, and there was this man, this man, and he was the general of the, one of the generals of the British army, who, who saw him dressed as an alim, scholar, had his turban and what have you, and obviously it was persecution. And then he has the man arrested, has the sheikh arrested, and says, he says, if you don't, you Muslims are the ones who claim that everything is inside of your book. Everything's inside of this Quran, this book of yours. And then he says he pulls out a gun. My teacher's telling him, he said he pulls out a gun. And he says, he puts it to his head. And he says, if you don't show me in the Quran where my name is, then I'm going to shoot you. Show me, everything's in your Quran, right? So I want to know where my name is. So he said, the sheikh, his teacher says, what's your name? And he said, my name is, he said, he said Mr. Cook, Cook. His name was Cook, right? Mr. Cook. And then he quotes the verse in Sur Surat al-Jum'ah, wa tarakuk. Ka'ima. <laughs> or Tara Cook. He said, There's your name, Tara Cook. Your name is the Cook, right there in the Quran. And he said, The man just smiled, the khalas, and let him be. But everything's inside of the Quran. Eh? And just whether you have the basira and the heart, the living heart, to actually see the realities that Allah Ta'ala has placed inside of His book, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah Ta'ala for tawfiq. 
for Qiraat al Quran, for Mafahim of the Quran, understandings of the Quran, and the Nafahat of the Quran, the diffusions that come through the Quran, bin Tanazulati, from those staggered descents that come through the Quran. Of the great Imams of Hadramaut, his name is Imam Abu Bakr bin Salim. He has a book called Mi'raj al Arwah, a book called Mi'raj al Arwah, the, the, the ascension of the souls, a complex book inside of spirituality. And he said that one of the most complex books you'll ever read inside the science of spirituality. And he mentions that the entire that book that he wrote, the openings that he got to recite, I mean, to, to write that book, all of it came from the nefahat, the diffusions of reciting the Quran in Ramadan best. And the barakah of his reciting the Quran in one Ramadan, what came from it is this book in and of itself called Mi'raj al Arwah. A uh, book at the highest degree, mashallah, tabarakallah. We ask Allah Ta'ala for our own due portion. Uh, constantly with us. And the Quran is with us. And we have to ensure that it's with us, the Quran. And just like, look at the way to the Rasul, that's enough for us to become people of the Quran. Yani, Ahlul Quran, Ahlullah wa khasatu. In the Sahih, that the people of the Quran are the people of God and His elect. The best of you are those who learn the Quran and teach it. The Prophet وسلم, he says, yani, the one who memorizes the Quran, the one who memorizes the Quran, it's as if prophecy has been stuffed between his two sides. The Prophet says, and what does it mean to be a person of the Quran? When you enter into paradise, say, Ameen. Ah, so when you enter into paradise, that you'll be said, Iqra. The first word you get from the angel, Iqra. Recite the Quran. Fartaqi. And ascend. Look at the word, Iqra. Fartaqi. Ah, ascend. Yani recite. And ascend. And you shall ascend to where you recite it from the Quran. That's why some of them say that the nature of Jannah in and of itself, the archetype of, the architecture of Jannah is Qurani. It's Quranic. That the degrees of paradise are in accordance with the, with the verses inside of the Quran in and of itself. 